background on Anathema. Um, so she is from our homebrew world and our podcast, Flipping the Table. Um, she is a tiefling from a region of the kingdom of Drakkar called Esnax. Um, and she is a, a sorcerer, shadow sorceress. My name is Brianna, and I welcome you to the Tales of Adventure, a D&D podcast like no other. right there you look like you could use a drink oh you know what yeah actually i could thank you come come i'm anathema it's really pleasure to meet you pleasure to meet you too <sighs> she sits down she has a large book at her side um and she just sort of puts her hand to her head i'm anathema bright mist thank you for the drink you're welcome. You look like you could use it. Uh, is it. Is it that obvious? I've been on a few adventures myself, and I can recognize the look. Oh my gosh, it's just good to be south again. We just went through it up north in the cold and the snow. What are you doing up north? I was following my mother, um, who I thought was gone for a very long time. Uh, I grew up without both my mother and my father in the, in the streets. So I kind of had to make it on my own. Saw her 14 years later riding a dragon. So that was interesting. We followed the dragon up north into some shit. That must have been quite a surprise. What all did you run into up there? Was. So, Drakkar is south of what's called the Black Wall, which is um, really just a wall of the undead in the snow. Uh, we ran into uh, that wall of the undead. We had to get past it, um, which it was kind of terrifying. Um, we had to get past this wall of the undead. Um, my friend Duskwood, and she, I'm imagining the whole party came in. She indicates the party. He's a, he's a cowboy looking wood elf in the corner, probably with a whiskey. <laughs> um, my friend Duskwood and I had to get by <laughs> the wall. And we had to make a deal with what turned out to be a vampire to get past this wall. And oh, vampires are very tricky to deal with. Incredibly tricky. Uh, we thought we were giving something of ourselves, and he took our friends. So we're in this kingdom of vampires past the wall and I find out that my mother was actually quite intrinsically linked with them oh my that's, that's never good there's a lot of spill in my guts to a stranger I, I get that a lot I've been through quite a bit of interesting journeys myself now I just wander around collecting stories trust me nothing you say will move past me as long as it stays between us. Don't worry, it will. I've no one else to tell. Most of my friends have moved on. Looks a little sad at that and takes a sip of her drink. We're past the Black Wall. We're in this kingdom. No one's, we can't speak the language. But as we walk through, everyone's bowing. And it's weird, really weird. Very strange. Duskwood and I reached the castle and find that they were bowing because I look like my mother, who is a big deal in this kingdom. Lolovka, we learn it's called. I've heard of that name, like in whispers. One of the rare people who have heard it. It's not commonly known. Like I said, I travel a lot, so you pick up a lot of things after a while. It's existed past the wall, though, for centuries with the same queen. Everyone there, most everyone there is of a vampiric nature. So we're surrounded, we're taken in. My friend, our friends are missing. And we meet a new friend, uh, another person from south of the wall, his name's Klaus, and he's also in the bar too. He's uh, sitting with Duskwood. He's um, very skinny, very angular, just sort of like probably, like, probably telling a story very loudly. 
Oh, he's one of those plenty of little fellows who looks like he could cut you with his elbow. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, I've definitely been checked by that elbow a couple times. Um, his name's Klaus, but we found him there. They were keeping him as a slave. Ugh. The queen, Victoria, brings me to her because I, it will definitely look like my mother. Dysphoria, bright mist. She was a shadow sorcerer as well. I didn't know that either. I'm learning a lot about my family. So she was being, she was, I don't know, being kept. I still don't know if it was against her will or because she wanted to be there. But she was doing this work on this wall with three locks, working to get past these locks to whatever was behind it because the queen wanted it. Or maybe keeping what was behind the wall trapped. I still don't know. I haven't ever spoken to her. Three locks is quite the protection. I shudder to think of what's behind that door. Found out. She like nudges the book a little bit and kind of p- plays with the pages, um, which are uh, which are black. Each page is uh, is dark, dark black. I just kind of eye the book curiously, but I don't say anything. Dysphoria. We were told she was dead at that point. She had died at the hands of a gentleman named Tulio, who was one of the guards. Who knows Duskwood? Apparently. They go way back. Small world. Find out that she wants this wall this wall open. She wants to go behind whatever's behind that. Wants to see whatever's behind this door. Let it out. The only person who can do it is the daughter of the previous Bright Mist. That's me. Well, the daughter of the previous Bright Mist who has these powers. Sister, who I just existed, is not magically inclined. Her name's Balia. She was born behind the wall and she loves it. Loves it. It's one way to discover you have siblings. <sighs> I imagine that was a very awkward reunion. Really awkward and kind of remains so. Like she's very into Lilovka. She actually loves the queen and she's great in a way that, I don't know, very militant. I wasn't raised, we weren't raised anything alike, which was kind of crazy. Um, so it's weird. We look so much alike. We're definitely family. We're definitely related, but not the same at all. It's interesting. Makes you wonder what could have happened if the roles were reversed. I often do wonder what would have happened and why this happened this way. My parents were gone one day when I was 10. It was really shortly after I started to show that I had these abilities. I suspect, and I haven't had a chance to really talk to my father about this. We found him. Oh gosh, that's a whole thing. We found him north of, we found him in, um, just a little bit south of the wall, like living by himself, a hermit in the snow. What about all of the awkward family reunions today? Yeah. Sister Heckle says that he's a revenant. Oh. I mean, he's back from the dead, like brought himself back to serve some sort of means of revenge. I feel like there is a very long story behind that. That's his, that's his story, too. That I have, We haven't even had a chance to sit down and chat about it. We've been very busy. <laughs> she kind of laughs about it, but then just sort of just, like, takes a deep drink. Sister <laughs> so just kind of motions to the bartender to bring another. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go, you, it's weird going from thinking you don't have a family to finding your undead father, your mother on a dragon who is then dead, in between flying off and you getting to where she flew off to and a sister and apparently a brother who's I still have to ask questions about I got his name anyway really long story goodness so where did the dragon go is my question oh his name is Kilgrim (laughs) and he belongs to Balia now he's bonded to her I imagine the dragon's very useful to have. Hopefully she decides to not do things like send him out to burn the enemies. It's gets very messy. Never seen what she does with Kilgrim. He's usually with her when she's outside. He's watching her. 
Uh, he can be polymorphed. I've seen him in the form of a, a kind of her age, like a 14 year old with her at the table. Like they're mostly companions as far as what I've seen. I've, she can ride him, but I've never seen her do it. And he listens to her. He protects her. We had to leave her and Kilgrim north of the wall with Queen Victoria, but from what I've gathered, she does love her. So, and then Kilgrim will protect her from anything else that could happen. She doesn't know any other life than the life in Lilovka. So, here's the, let me start at the beginning. It's a really good place to start. Generally. We're pulled into the throne room of Queen Victoria and told that this wall needs to be opened. Now, Duskwood, he doesn't like this. He's a part of what's called the Drakari Thunder, a group of special military group. Uh, they use, um, uh, it, it, the, like he calls it a blunderbuss. It's a gun. It's like magic for people who can't cast magic. I always wondered what they, people were talking about when they said that, but no one would ever tell me. Well, it's, it's, Big boomstick. He let me shoot it once. It was fun. But... Always fun to shoot. But, um... He doesn't like it. The part of what he's... There's not many people in the Drakari Thunder. I don't even know how many. And he can't really tell. It's a half secret. Like, everyone knows that the Thunder exists, but they're not, like, a widely advertised situation. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like that we're being asked to do this. And neither do I. We're trying to get back to our friends. We're trying to get back to Heckle. We're trying to get back to my father who was taken in that situation. And we're trying to make demands, but we don't have any of the upper hand. We were following my mother. And as we were following my mother, our friend Dupont, another was another elf, a wizard, ran off after a clue and he was taken. So we got to find him too this whirlwind of introductions I find my sister Balia who is Queen Victoria's right hand man and we find Tulio who's his who is her left hand man apparently he's a general in her army and used to work with Duskwood hundreds of years ago but he's a human he got turned hundreds of years ago maybe like a hundred she kind of squints at Duskwood I don't know how old he is anyway yeah sometimes it's hard to tell it sort of just keeps gesturing for more alcohol that he brought to the table. Brought to our rooms. More like being held, but it's not a dungeon. I don't want to cooperate. I don't want to open this door. I want to find Dupont, and I want to find our friends, and I want to leave, but we can't. We meet with Klaus, and we're kind of just dragged around from place to place. Klaus is what they call a death speaker. He can see ghosts and he can talk to them. He can see the moment when a spirit has left the world, their last moments, which is scary as hell, but he can tap into that. He doesn't, he doesn't like to do it often, but, and for good reason, we don't ask him to, but the reason he's being kept is because she wants him to speak to someone on her behalf. He likes collecting people who are interesting from what I gather. Uh. Hmm, I've dealt people like that before. I will make sure to stay away from her interest. Absolutely. It's pretty easy to stay away from her, fortunately. Yeah, unless you have business in that area. You might have some things we need to look into there. So after some sneaking around, we find um, Duskwood, Klaus, and I find Dupont in a dungeon, in, a, in the room, with the door, with the three locks. One's been broken. He's half out of his mind. He's talking about the blood and how only the blood can open the door. And he's gone insane. And we think that he's just staying that way. But as soon as I get closer to it, he gets more lucid. And I touch the lock. And we're pulled in. Oh, my. Behind this door is this terrifying figure massive he's huge his skeletal he calls himself the buried one and he's one of the old gods they don't they're whispered about they're not very well known they're it's heresy as my friend heckle would say and heresy according to duskwood as well but Dupont, when we got behind the door to see the buried one he became lucid 
The Buried One offers a book to me and to Klaus and asks one of us to take it. Seems like a very dangerous opportunity. At first we don't. It is dangerous. The old gods are looking for champions on their behalf. There's a war coming, according to Dupan, between the old gods and the new, I think, or between the old gods. I don't even know what this war is going to be. There are eight of the old gods in total. Once eight champions are chosen, that's when the war starts. Duskwood was set out to stop these champions from being chosen. He almost tried to shoot the god. I don't know how that would have worked for him. Not very well. It's not effective unless you want to anger them. He doesn't think things through like that. Didn't take the book. Not then. We were ousted from his realm and the two locks were broken. Immediately we're taken away. It's like the queen has eyes everywhere. She knows everything that's going on. She sees everything that's happening. Immediately taken to her throne room where we talk about what's going on. She is thrilled that I was offered the book and she wants me to break that last lock to release the buried one from behind the door. Duskwood does not want me to. I feel like that would be not good at all. There's a reason things like that are buried. We have Dupon. He's freed. But we need our other friends still. And I try to strike a deal. I'm really good at kind of talking out of the other side of my mouth. Trying to make sure that I'm coming out on top, even if I don't even know all the cards in play. I offer to unlock this door if I can have my friends, Sister Heckle, and my father back from wherever they were taken. She agrees and arranges a dinner. That's suspicious. Oh, we're still trying to get out of this without actually opening the door. Trying to get, trying to have my cake and eat it too. She agrees and arranges a dinner. Duskwood and Tulio have a long chat. Tulio hates him. Well, I thought he did. Things are complicated in that arena. Uh, he gave me his Drakari Thunder badge to take back to Weldrake if um, things went south with Tulio. And I got scared thinking about what if things went south with Tulio. And I, 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 I kissed the cowboy and sent and set him on his way. Um, so that's complicated. And she takes another drink. At this point, the table's probably covered in drinks. And I'm starting to just your first in food as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> Instra's kind of keeping up with you there. She, she appreciates that. Talk. Tulio throws him through a wall and seven tables. He's tough. He can take it, but I'm pissed. There must have been a lot of anger there. A lot of anger on my end. I can imagine. Fortunately, Heckle heals him up. Uh, we get we get Heckle back. She's less one eye. They took an eye from her. Bastards. Why would they do that? I didn't know at the time why they did. Yeah, she's she's a tough cookie, but again. I get pissed. I would too. Klaus was also taken to speak to the queen before the dinner, and he tells us that she asked him to speak to her husband, dead, long dead, and also asked him to speak to my mother. We realized that she wanted to make sure that Dysphoria was actually dead. If she's not actually dead, then she doesn't necessarily need me, and we have a card off the table, one that we can't play. If she is, then that's... Also not great. Sticky situation there. Klaus offers to find my mother for me, wherever she is. She's in between, like my dad. A revenant, too, we think. That's good and bad news. I don't know what she can do as a revenant. Arcus, my father, could never cast magic, so I don't know if that changes when you change like that, but... It complicates things, and it's a secret that I still don't think Queen Victoria knows that she's still out there. Probably best to keep that secret as long as possible until you're ready to take her on. I think so, too. Finding out a lot about my family. 
But we finally go to the dinner, and it's the most awkward thing you can imagine. My father is restrained. Um, he lost an arm before he, uh, before or after, I'm not sure. His quarry as a revenant is Tulio, the general, because Tulio is allegedly the one who killed my mother. That's enough to bring a, a man back from the dead with fury, I think. But Tulio is the man who just threw Duskwood through a wall and seven tables, so Marcus is a little worse for wear in his fights against him. Uh, my father is less one arm. He's scarred. He's another tough cookie, though. He's very strong, but he's being subdued in the same room as Tulio by uh, the queen, who has a calming spell on him. So he's not himself. He's dazed. He's just not even there. He's a husk of himself, and it's one of the first times I saw him and thought, oh, he might you know, be just sort of the shell holding what's left of a soul, right? For a while, I thought he was, thought of him as alive. Thought of him as somebody who could just be away from Julio and it's not like anything different. I guess I was holding on to him. I didn't have him for most of my life and I had him back and it felt unfair. Most awkward dinner in the entire world is the first time Bailey has ever met her father my father, our father. Duskwood sitting across from Tulio. Heckles next to me. Just We're just trying to get through it. We carry on as long as we possibly can. I try to walk away. I try to walk away with Bailey after a quick moment to see if she'd be willing to help us. She's fully on Queen Victoria's side. At this point, Victoria's had it, and she looks at me and says that she is done playing the games, which I understand. That I'm going to open the door. She'll do terrible things. She'll take my father from me. She doesn't even speak to what she would do to Balia or to my friends. And at that point, I know I have to. I have to open the last lock, open the door to the buried one. The champion is the one who takes the book. And it'd be, it'd be better if it was someone who we knew rather than a stranger at some point. I don't know why she, at this point she wanted a champion for the buried one. I don't know who the buried one is to her or why it's so important. She says they worship him. The vampires do. The whole kingdom does. Could very well be from he that the vampires came. It's definitely a possibility. Something far older than we could imagine going on here. I think on my feet. I refuse at first to take the book, and I ask for ten minutes with my father before she takes him. She clears the room, and I get to talk to him about a little bit. He comes out of it, and I don't have much time to talk to him about anything. I just try to get answers, because I think these are the last ten minutes I'm going to spend with him. And I find out that I have a brother. We were separated. He's with the Queen Regent in Esnax. He serves her. He's safe. It means he's home. Working, I guess. I don't know. But there's more bright mists out there. I may have seen him briefly may have saved him. His name's Arthas. Yes, I... I've, I've seen him in passing before. He, he looks like he's doing well from what I can tell. I don't know if he ever... I don't know if he needs to find me. Or if I need to find him. I don't know if we ever need to meet. It doesn't seem like good things happen when you get a bunch of bright mists together. You'll never know unless you try. But, um, think about him a lot. It's, in, it's comforting? In a way? I don't know. But Esnax is matriarchal. The bright, name, bright mist name passes from mother to daughter. Men take the women's names when they join the families. He says that we're descended from some kind of royalty. Blood wars happened hundreds of years ago in Esnax. It was battling families to see who, which bloodline was the strongest. And the bright mists lost. That's why we're not from some kind of fancy castle or what have you. We're not a ruling house. We're kind of slid into obscurity. Part of many families that experienced that. It was, it was a very messy time. A messy time indeed. The bloodline's connected to the buried one. And part of the bloodline, something. We had a we have some sort of deal with one of with the ruling house where we have to give up one of the children. I didn't hear much before I was taken away, or before he was taken away from me. He made me promise to take care of Balia. He was happy to hear about her. She's strong. She's fast. Kind of scary. 
but he was happy to hear that she's like him. I couldn't pick up a long sword if I tried. I don't even know what to do with it. Typically helps to poke people, but the pointy end. That's what I've heard. <laughs> He's taken away, and that's when I realize what I have to do. I have to open this door, so I'm the one that... It's a bad pun on a from a tiefling, but it's the better, better the devil you know. Squid realizes what I have to do, too, and what he has to do. I understand that if I take this book, Duskwood has to kill me to stop this war from happening. It's like an almost impossible decision. The thing that I had to do. Holds my hand as we go back down to that antechamber to open the door. And we do. Take the book. I speak to the buried one and he's terrifying. I say that I do want to take the book. And he and I, the buried one and I, go somewhere else. We're in a different place, a room. And he's not scary, he's not skeletal, he's just an older gentleman. He looks human. And he's kind. Changed his shape because he could tell I was afraid of it. Tells me he wants to end death for the mortals. That he wants to eliminate it. My debate is the natural order of things, and he says that I sound like his daughter. I don't get a chance to ask who his daughter is. But I take the book. I become his champion. She nods towards the book. That's it, right there. The spell book. Mr. has been staring at this book off and on the entire time. It's a spell book. It's um, interesting, because I've never had to use one before. But it's tied to me now. She kind of puts the book in her lap. As you can tell, Duskwood did not shoot me. He was close to. Notice that. I was going to ask. <laughs> no, he did not. I, as I said, things are kind of complicated with me and him. Couldn't look at me for a little while. It is heresy, and it is treason. It's against everything he stands for, but I say to him that I trust him, that I want him to watch me just in case things get out of my control with this whole championship thing. But I know where the other champions are. And I convince him that maybe if we get close enough, he could stop this war at its source. I don't know. It's crazy talk. I'm talking about trying to kill a god. But I convince him. Maybe it's because it was me who was trying to do the convincing. Like you said, better the devil you know. Better the devil you know. So I've taken the book. We're still in this kingdom. And... The book is powerful. It's strong. It gives me abilities that I didn't even know I could ever do. And it takes it out of you when you do. And there's always a price to power that strong. It's usually never what you expect. Queen Victoria is ecstatic that we've opened the door and taken the book. She's like a whole different woman. She's not hard. She's not serious. She's happy, light trying to welcome me into her fold like a member of her family. She throws a ball. We're still trying to get out of Lilovka. We want to go. We have to go now. Duskwood needs to report to the Thunder what he saw. Stay close to the situation, he says. Keep an eye on it. Which is fair. If I'm the situation, I'm okay if he keeps an eye on me. And again, I want him to keep me in check. We negotiate our way out at this dance. If Queen Victoria offers four guards to follow us south of the wall to keep an eye on us. She offers me, she offers alliance with the kingdom of Golovka. She offers me an army winner if I want it. She wants this war to happen. I take them, I take the alliance, but she asks that in exchange for a conversation with the buried one. She wants to talk to him. It's like an instinct now. I know how to get to him. I know how to talk to him. I know how to bring people to him if I need to. Happened as soon as I took the book. I just know how to do it. So I agree. I take her to the buried one. We have a conversation. He's never shown me that skeletal face again. And they see each other. And the queen starts to cry. The buried one's her father. And she hasn't seen him in centuries. I had a feeling... I don't want to say that I'm friends with Queen Victoria, but I am going to say that I understand her. I understand her very well. We have Arcus. 
We're leaving. As before we start to leave, Sister Heckle pulls me aside. Oh, pulls me from Duskwood's room the next morning. It's complicated. I'm not one to judge. <laughs> eh, we still don't know what's going on. Most people don't. Like I said, not one to judge. The life and adventure that is weird. It's weird and it's complicated. This is everything in life, whether people admit it or not. That's right. She pulls me aside the next morning to talk. She is a cleric, I did know that, of one of the new gods, Riru. She is the goddess of chaos and surprise. And it's always surprised me that Sister Heckle, who is very level-headed, she's almost like, I waffle between calling her my mother or my sister. She's like a big sister who keeps me in line. I often say, what would Heckle do? And she, Heckle's not even me. Real name's Faith. <clears throat> and she's not a human like she shows herself to be. She's a changeling. Guess that fits more with the god. And it's interesting. She shows me that she can change any, anything she wants, but she still is lacking an eye in every single change that's been taken from her. Make a mental note. It's a petty note. It's a vindictive note. It's probably not the nicest note. To maybe request the eye of the man who took hers from her, too. Seems fair to exchange. It's a small request from the queen, I think. No, she tells me that she's a member of the Conclave of the Radiant. She's an Inquisitor. Meaning that she goes and hunts down heresy. Potentially problematic, I can imagine. Everything's problematic in this situation. I've just decided to start rolling with it. She needs to report me to the Conclave. And she teaches me something. This book allows me to learn magic that I never had access to learn before. She teaches me sending, so we can still talk. Huh. Very useful trick. Hard to learn, though. Very useful trick, indeed. Difficult to learn, but I got it, kind of immediately. I wish I could say the same. Still gives me a headache thinking about how long it took me to figure that out. <laughs> She took us south of the wall. We said our goodbyes. She's still up north in Borgris. I miss her, though, a lot. She's one of my best friends. She's like a sister to me. I'm sure you'll see her again. If I'm being hunted by an Inquisitor, I kind of hope it's her. Keep an eye out now for one-eyed folks. I like that's generally a good idea. <laughs> and that leads us here. Away from the vampires. Now we have this book. We're on our way south to Arkney to try to figure out more about magic and make me as strong as we can so we can do things like, you know, kill a god. There are two other champions. One of them is another dear friend of mine. I'm keeping her in my back pocket. Raina does not need um, Duskwood on her tail. Not right now. Amazing. Complicated indeed. It's life but complications. That's my story so far. What about the other one? He's the champion of the drowned one. God of the oceans. Drowned one? Hmm. He commands this navy. He commands the water. See him in visions sometimes. We all know where the others are. We're linked like that. So he's seen me too. He's not impressed. But, you know, that's his problem. On our way south to the ocean to maybe take him out too. For him, I recommend fire. They tend to not take it very much. That's what um, Lorena is the champion of. The Ashened One, goddess of fire. There's three of us. We gotta keep the other four from coming up. It's because shudders think of what will happen when that happens. Do you have any ideas to the gods might be for those? knows. He knows a lot about the old gods. He doesn't talk too much about what he does or why he does it, but part, he did tell me that he was tasked with finding a champion for the buried one. And he found me. I don't like it, but I can understand why he thought I would be a good fit for the buried one. He's melancholy. He's sad. He's lost something. I 
think the reason he wants to end death is because he doesn't want people to lose things like he has, but uh, we've had conversations about it. He has not managed to convince me yet, but I can see why. Life without death sounds very appealing, but you have to remember without death there is no consequences. Life loses much of its meaning and Let's just say there's the reason death exists. Exactly. Exactly. Nope. You're rehashing the same argument. As far as ideas for what we're doing next, I'm going to try to kill a god. We're taking that one day at a time. This is a good way to take it. That's... I don't even know where you would begin, and I've killed quite a lot of things in my time. I was wondering or hoping you might have any pointers. Nothing I could think of at the moment, but I may have some old acquaintances and some strings I can pull. Look, you're talking to a you're talking to a woman who loves a good pulled string. I'll definitely have to see what I can do, both because I like you and because I really don't want this war to happen. It does. It's a bad thing. It's an objectively terrible thing. No one does. <laughs> world changing. Um, the world does not need. That kind of change. No, absolutely not. We'll see what I can do and see how what favor does I can call in. Should be able to get something rolling. The question will be what? Greatly appreciated. Always happy to help stop the end of the world again. <laughs> could just stop ending for five minutes. That'd be so great. It would be really great if the world would stop ending for five minutes. Yes. She raises her glass to, to yours. I raise my, like, fifth glass. <laughs> One of those nights. Uh, let's, let's speak of something lighter. Not into the light on such a depressing note, and I will start to harassing some of my old friends in the morning, and I'll see what I can do. Let me know when you're ready to take on this god. I will see if I can be there to help. Thank you. I'll 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 send I'll send a message your way. Tales of Adventure is written, directed, and produced by me, Brianna Toiber, as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network. The music is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To see more of his work, visit his website at chesterstudios.net. Find out more about Pseudonym Social by visiting our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. If you like what I'm doing and would like to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial and choose one of the tiers connected to Tales of Adventure. <laughs>